Welcome to the cabin, come on inside. We're gonna be showing you a little bit of our food stash today. We have the house all in order. Our wood stove is back where it needs to be and just everything looks spick and span in here. So it's a good time, good time to show you what's going on. We get a lot of questions on where we store our canned food and all of our canned food is stored inside predominantly in our kitchen it has been a little bit challenging to find spaces to store it so we have it stashed throughout the house and there's a few different reasons why it's challenging we like to be able to access it so we want to be able to see what we have and it's also quite heavy that's something that you may not think about but canned food is considerably heavy especially if it's all in one area for obvious reasons we cannot put any of our canned food outdoors in the winter which is six months of the year that we have frost because you will have seals break if you do that. So we can't store anything outdoors. It all has to be stored indoors with us. All of the canned food that we preserve is predominantly food that we have harvested, we have grown or fished or hunted. Uh, nothing is really store-bought except for maybe if we're like adding one thing or two. So a lot of effort and energy and time has went into it and it means a lot to us. It is our food supply. So it is what we are eating from pretty much on a daily basis. Our canned food is not necessarily like to stockpile. It's only for about one or two years and it's kind of evolving. So we, we go through it, we can more, we add back to it. It's just our daily food. And canned food can definitely last a lot longer than that. It can last probably decades. I think the oldest jar we've ever opened up was maybe three years old or so. We generally go through this food within one to two years. Let's get started with showing you some of our canned food right behind me on our kitchen island. It's a little movable table that we can roll around. Our house is only 320 square feet on this first floor, so it's, it's not big. We're not gonna be moving around much today. You may notice right off the bat that we have a lot of half pints on this shelf, and that is because I like to keep various little uh, casserole dishes on top of there. So this is usually not a canned food storage. This is where we put like flour and sugar and things like that. So it's kind of a, right now it's predominantly uh, for our canned food and they are stacked high on the bottom, a little bit higher than I would ideally like. That makes this table very, very heavy to move around. Some of the things we have here is onion jam. So that is delicious. Cowboy candy, hooligan, I have salsa, sauerkraut, and fish. We have fish pretty much all throughout the house. So we got a lot of that. This area works really good for storing jars. Again, not, not ideally where I would store them. These cardboard flats are awesome for stacking them up. I try not to stack jars directly on top of each other more than too high. So if you have these like flats, you can take off some of the weight and, and distribute it a little bit better. So these are really awesome for storage. This is also where we have a lot of our jams and jellies and we're gonna be running, I think we're gonna be running out of those this year. I only have like eight, eight jars or so left. So let's head over to our other big canned food storage area. In the past, this has been where we store pretty much all of our canned food. This shelf Eric made a few years back and it can hold probably close to 400 jars. So that's a lot of jars. And I, I don't think I'm making an overstatement when I say that that weighed over 500 pounds. And we realized that it was a little bit too much weight on our floor, so we don't do that anymore. So you can see that this is not completely filled up. That's intentional, it just was too heavy. So it's probably not even, I mean, maybe half full right now. There's a lot of really good stuff over here. We have salmon, again, only some of our salmon, but I think it's really cool we have Salmon from this year, these are silvers from Valdez. And I think we did those with garlic and jalapenos. And then we have some salmon from last year, which is from Chitna. So those are red salmon and those are just plain. And then we have two different kinds. These are also from Valdez. These are silver salmon, just two different ways, ginger and tomato sauce. A few other items, things that, you know, really I tried to organize this so we could see it really well. So we have like topping foods, pepperoncinis, and we can just get to them. They're really accessible. I have a tote right in front. This is not ideal. This is because we don't have room. So we have a tote filled to the brim with canned food. Ideally, I'll be kind of putting this in other spots as we start to go through our canned food a little bit more in the winter. Got our tomato sauce here, super chunky looks delicious. I've got garlic that has been cured and it's just back here in a box. One thing that's kind of cool about our canned food is that we do tend to have carryover, which is really neat. I don't know. I, I feel like this is just the coolest thing about canned food. Sometimes we make a recipe and we have, 
we don't go through it all that season. So we have it the next season and that year we won't usually make it. So a good example of that is this potato leek soup that we made in October of 2020. So we have been going through these. It's not like we don't like it or anything like that. It's just that we made so much at one time and we haven't made it since then, but it's been really nice. And I imagine we will run out of it this year. I think we only have four jars left of it. We've got some chicken broth here and you notice it's in a quart. Uh, we do most of our canning in pints. Pints is definitely the most common size for us, mainly because that's just like a good portion. So if we open it, we can either eat it right away, like salmon, we'll eat it in a day. Or if it's something like kimchi, we'll just put it in our fridge or our ice chest and that will last us maybe a few days or a week or something like that. Chicken stock is something we either use in one meal or it's spread out over two meals. Eric and I don't always make the same recipes, so we're definitely open to new things and sometimes certain things do better in the garden. Uh, this is a new one for us too. This is the balsamic Brussels sprouts. Very excited to try that. Okay, I think we're done. In general, this area has been absolutely amazing. I'm really proud of our organization skills this year. Uh, in the past, we've had this shelf in different spots and once we start seeds, it's just like, it's a total nightmare in here. So this is, this is so good how we have it. We have a smaller couch. I think that's definitely what helped us. We have our ice chest up high. Usually it's down low. So it's way easier to get in here and get into our fridge items. That is completely full. And Bo is very happy in the corner because he does not like the fire. He prefers a much cooler temperature. So this area stays really cold and good for him. He likes it that way. We have our squash stashed up in the corner. Don't have that many, but they're, they're stashed up there. They look pretty cool. Let's head over to the shelf by the oven. When we first put this shelf here, it was not designed for canned food. So it has a lot of other items. Um, it's very multi-use and we just have canned food stashed here because we have nowhere else. We've got more salmon over here, you guessed it, and just various other little canned foods in here. I have some more sauerkraut and green salsa right there in these flats. We also have some pots and food over here that we purchased from the store. It's just really a shamble of a shelf. So <laughs> maybe one day it'll be for something, but right now it's, it's used for a lot of different things. And we do not keep food in here that we do not have to keep in here. So we have, a massive amount out in our conics, things that can be, you know, things that could freeze and that it's not a problem if they freeze. You do have to be careful with liquid and glass though. Some of those items do have to be stored indoors. There's more food in the kitchen in jars, but these are the ones that we are pretty much using on a daily basis. So that's not, I guess some of it is preserved food, but not all of it is. And I'm just a big fan of mason jars, as you can tell. This shelf right here is probably about 25% or less of our own food. We have some dried spices, greens, and herbs, things like that. But a lot of it is actually store purchase. And I just feel like it's convenient for me to keep them in jars so I can see what's in there. I can just grab them. We can cook with them. I do a lot of that type of cooking, baking, and like grains in the winter, especially bread. We like to bake a lot of bread too. This is only a fraction of it. Like I said, most of it is out in the Conex. That's where we actually store all of our jars too. We store them outdoors when they're empty. If I had to guess how many jars we have, I, I mean, I don't feel like it'd be wrong to say we may have a thousand. That may seem like a lot, but we use them. We use them a lot. We love mason jars in this house. Let's show you the last place we have some canned food stash. Get that out of here. This is our medicine cleaning bathroom slash canned food storage. So we've got a lot of stuff in there, but we also have canned food. We have a lot of good stuff. This is that celery. No, I think this was, no, this is cream of celery soup. I don't know why I couldn't remember. We have some moose chili. That's the last moose we have. We have, I think 10 or so jars of this stuff and it's awesome. I have some cauliflower soup from last year and then I have some moose bone broth and tallow and things like that under there. Oh, and then I also have more salmon. Does that surprise you? This is actually from Kasilov, I believe. So these are red or sockeye salmon. We have some nice heavy duty shelves in here to hold all the weight from the canned food. And this is one of my favorite spots to store the canned food because it is most ideal. So it is dark and cool. Uh, I can just like feel the cold air when I open these. Um, our wood stove is all the way over there. So this is the opposite side of the house and it must just be getting some cooler air somehow. Uh, so it's perfect. It's dark too. Dark is always good. And I will show you a perfect example of that. 
I have two different tea blends here and this one has been sitting up top on our shelf. So I don't know if you can tell, but this one has not been sitting on top on our shelf. So it's a lot brighter and more vibrant. And that's just because it hasn't been exposed to, to the sunlight. So ideally things like this, you really would store in a cooler, darker place, but our cabin is just the exact opposite of that. It is warm and dry and not that dark. You may be wondering how many jars Eric and I have of canned food. So food jars that actually have food in them that have been preserved by us. And again, they haven't been all preserved in one year, but, and I don't, I don't usually count them. So I did a special count for today and I ended on 500 and 76 jars with food in them. That's not including ones on the counter. That's not including the dry items that we have, of course, and it's not including anything in our fridge or anything that we've gifted this year. I think that at some point, probably a month ago, we probably had well over 600, but we eat them. We eat them every day. There's probably a good 20 in our fridge right now. So again, this is our food. We are eating from it. I don't generally keep track of how much we put up in a year but I wanted a final count for you. And it was pretty touching, honestly. I got a little sentimental when I was looking through and counting all of them, especially because we know that we are going to be taking a little bit of a break from this for a short period. So Eric and I thought it would be fun to bring you along for a day's worth of meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we're gonna get started on breakfast. Breakfast for me and Eric, sometimes it can be like fruit or yogurt or oatmeal. Uh, other times we like to go all out and make like a real savory dish. So that is what breakfast is going to be today. It's going to be savory and I'm going to head into this cupboard. This is my potato storage cupboard. I'm sure you know that by now. So I have hordes of potatoes back there and they're staying dark and cool. And then we also have some eggs that we limed. We limed for the first time last year and it turned out okay. We had a pretty good success, but some of it didn't work perfectly. This year I was much more strict on my measurements. I was really careful. And I was also really careful to use eggs that were just thicker in general. I waited a little bit later in the season. I took eggs from July from the girls, so they had really hard shells. And they have been doing awesome. Eric's already been pulling from these beauties. I'm gonna grab some of these for breakfast and some potatoes. This is what we use for liming our eggs. We did probably four to 500 eggs this year. We have about seven gallons that we did. So pretty nice to have that. We also have some pemmican and our honey is back here. Isn't that beautiful? This storage is perfect again because it is dark and cool, which is perfect for keeping things preserved for a long time. Okay, we got to disturb Bo's peaceful sleep over here. And this is another box of potatoes. We keep these ones over here because these are the ones we're trying to go through first. And that's because this variety, which is Sioux Sitna Gold, they tend to sprout first. Look at that, you can see one right there already shooting up a little sprout, but you just knock it off. Let's grab a few of these. Let's see, I'm pretty hungry, so that'll work. Yeah, that'll work right there. For breakfast this morning, fried potato breakfast burritos from scratch. I've been really enjoying these limed eggs. It's kind of weird when you think about it, eating really old eggs, but we eat these just like a regular egg. They're awesome. And onions, they've been doing great. Errol had the new method for braiding them this year. We got a nice big white one we're using for breakfast. Do we have any large? No, just tallow. Just tallow.
Those are frozen bell peppers, multicolored. We're really enjoying those ones this year. Let's get our eggs in this little mixture we got going. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's like a fajita. We're popping open a can of green salsa for this meal. Oh yeah, breakfast is served. Whoa. Oh my gosh, yours is really loaded. For lunch, I'm grabbing a rutabaga outside in our outdoor freezer. These are where we have to store our turnips and rutabagas because they do not store very well indoors. So this bad boy is frozen, but we're gonna turn them into soup. I'm gonna let this thaw out for just a little bit and we're going to get our squash prepared for this soup that we're making. We have an acorn squash here. I'm finding that these are not storing that well in here. I think it's because it's just too warm. So we have to go through this stuff kind of at a rapid pace. So we've been eating a lot of like potatoes, squash, and turnips or rutabagas. Kind of excited for this meal because we've never turned them into soup before. Let's go ahead and get this guy steaming. We're adding the rutabaga to a pot now, and then I'm gonna get our squash scooped out and put into this bowl as well. And then we're gonna add a bunch of chicken broth to this. Just opened up a jar. Looks like cantaloupe. We're keeping it simple. I think that that rutabaga is going to have a lot of sweetness from being frozen for so long. And the acorn squash is pretty mild too. I think it would be really good with some woodsy herbs. So I have thyme and oregano and then sage and rosemary. And then of course some salt and peppers going in there too. And we're going to let this all cook down before I can blend it. So we tried the soup and it is really good already as is. You could totally add cream or something like that, but I think it has a really nice flavor. We topped it with some onion jam and some cowboy candy and then some Parmesan cheese that we had. And it looks, it looks great. It's gonna be a good lunch. That's good. It's really sweet. We're at the freezer grabbing some stuff for dinner. We need fish and we also need some roasted peppers. Pretty excited for the dinner that we're gonna make. It's a little bit fancy. Our freezer this year is fairly full, but that is because we have a lot of fish in there. So we were very lucky and fortunate this year to harvest a lot of fish. We have a lot of fish for us and the dogs. And I find that Eric and I are also gravitating towards like freezing some of our produce. So we do have frozen produce from the garden in here and just other random items that maybe I didn't feel comfortable canning or something like that. So I'm gonna grab what I need. Two those. All right, we got some nice Copper River sockeye fillets. <laughs> we generally pull our fish out right before we eat it because it does not take a long time to thaw. So I just put it in some cold water and it'll be ready to go in an hour. I have a few other things though to get ready. And first I am going to get our kefir, kefir ready. We have to turn that over. So, so kefir is a probiotic yogurt 
and we are turning it over. I want it to get rid of some of the whey, so like separate. So I'm gonna actually strain it and get it a little bit thicker for dinner tonight. There you go, those are the grains. We're gonna add those back to some fresh milk and then we're just gonna hang this up for about an hour or so. That's taken care of. We are going to start on some bread crumbs. We happen to have some sourdough, very stale sourdough in a roll. So I'm gonna try and make some of our own breadcrumbs tonight. I guess I'll just put them in my bag. That works pretty well. So I'm gonna set these aside for Eric. We are making fish meatballs with a awesome pepper sauce. I'm very excited about that. We haven't made that before. So it's kind of like you're making tomato sauce, but you're using peppers, which is amazing. And I have to get started on our noodles or our pasta dough. Start with about two and a half cups of flour. I don't make pasta that often, so all I have is bread flour because I make bread a lot more often. So that's what we're using. And I'm just pouring it directly on our countertop. I have four eggs, little teeny tiny eggs from our chickens. <laughs> and I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil and some kosher salt, and we're going to get this mixed up. While our pasta dough is resting, I'm gonna make our roasted pepper sauce. I got the roasted peppers in there, some bell pepper, onion, and garlic. We're gonna start with that, get them all browned, and we're gonna go in the blender. Oh my gosh, holy cow. few scoops of this kefir yogurt. The thickness of this is like in between kefir yogurt and kefir cheese. So it's a little on the thick side and that, that's probably enough liquid. Let's see if we can get this thing to blend. Whoa, that's really good. That's awesome. I didn't get to try it. All right. I added some salt. Yeah. I Is that unique? It's really good. You know, it, it tastes like, uh, like not green peppers, but you know what I mean, like like green peppers, like a bell pepper or like a an an ancho pepper. It does, but it specifically tastes like roasted green peppers. Different. Not roasted red peppers. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, right now we're still at like about half inch thick, so I gotta go thinner. Gotta go thinner. Really wanted to order that, and it wasn't a scam. Okay. If you did the P90X, you were here to do it. Of ripped. course, yeah. And now you do. Anyone could be ripped. I know, I don't need the program, I get it. Like, is there any quality about me that you admire? Yeah. That you may not relate to, like, that you may kind of relate to, like, a female male thing? You're smart, you're beautiful, you're funny. Okay, but you can be all those things. Then I guess I don't need anything. I'm saying We have each other. Call it wavy pasta. Homemade pasta. Let's get these meatballs mixed up over here. All I did was take those fillets, I took the skin off, and I kind of made like a burger meat almost, so it's gonna kind of be able to form into a patty. Meatballs, you can do whatever you want. These are fish, so keep that in mind. We're gonna do an egg, salt and pepper, and sage, and thyme in here, and then I cannot forget those awesome breadcrumbs we made. I think this is just like gonna make the dish. So let's get these in the oven. Oh cool, I gotta put a little more breadcrumbs. These things are awesome, can't believe these.
I think my pasta dough was a little bit too thick. I'd probably roll that out a little thinner next time, but all in all, it looks delicious. And this is a green pepper sauce, I guess, when I look this up. I believe it's a vegan recipe, so I saw a lot of folks doing red peppers and making it vegan. This is clearly not vegan. <laughs> Looks delicious nonetheless. You want to try it? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. I'll try go. my thick pasta. For these meatballs. These breadcrumbs. Oh no, I've already entered into a problem. Which, how are the meatballs? Pretty good? Good. This is a really like fresh meal. You know what I mean? No, I get what you mean. It's light. Look at that size of that noodle. I like the sauce a lot. I think the sauce is really good. Mm. Would you make this again? Yeah. One thing I do would be cut that pasta in thinner strips and not as long. Make it a little easier to eat, but this is this is killer. A lot of great meals today. This was a good one to end it on, but I'm gonna say my favorite meal was the breakfast burritos. I feel like the sauce is I mean the burritos were pretty good. I'd probably go with the burritos too, actually. Alright, we love making these elaborate meals. I don't know if this is elaborate, but we love making more elaborate meals in the winter. Summer is like go, go, go when we have fresh food from the garden, but now we have more time to kind of slow down and make fancier stuff. So cheers to that and this lovely dinner, and then we're gonna enjoy the rest of our meal. <laughs> Do you want, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a little more pasta for us. Sure. There's a lot of sauce at the bottom. That's really tasty stuff at the bottom. Do you want that big noodle? You smell really good. You smell like the pepper sauce. Thank you for doing that.